All right, the title of the sermon this morning is Be Ready to Hear. Be Ready to Hear. So I get the title from the first verse of Ecclesiastes 5, when it says here, Keep thy foot when thou goest to the house of God, and be more ready to hear than to give the sacrifice of fools, for they consider not that they do evil. Now, Ecclesiastes is obviously a book about many different things, but just pulling this verse out here, uh, because I wanted to preach a sermon. Uh, you know, as I sat sort of listening to Gershon's sermon last week, I wanted to, it, it made me think, because I don't, I don't uh, sit in a lot of sermons, so it's nice to sometimes sit and be an audience member uh, listening to preaching. So the thought I had is, you know, I want to preach a sermon on, you know, what are some things that you should consider when listening to preaching? You know, what should be going through? What are some of the things you should be thinking about? Um, and that's what this sermon is about today, being ready to hear, you know, things that we should consider as we come to the house of God and prepare our heart to receive Bible preaching, okay? So number one, number one is you want to be ready. So to be ready to hear, you want to be ready in body and in spirit. Right, so there's a physical aspect and there's a spiritual aspect. But let's look at the physical first. First Corinthians six. What know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? For ye are bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. So this is the principle that most people will point to in the Bible, where of the principle of why you should take care of your body, your physical body. Why? Because it doesn't belong to you. You know, your body actually belongs to the Lord Jesus Christ, which is why, you know, this is the principle where we build, you know, you know wise practices like, you know, not taking drugs, you know, eating well, exercising, taking care, like not being too stressed out, things like that. These are things that are detrimental to your body. It's not only to be a f more effective in how you serve God, but it's also because your body doesn't belong to you. This is why, you know, I, I don't think it's good for Christians to just like tattoo, put tattoos all over their body. Because if your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, should you just be like graffitiing all over God's temple? That's really the principle that most Christians think about when they think the way they present themselves, the way they take care of the body, the way their body is presented. Because we want, you know, you look at the, in the Old Testament, you know, the, the, the clean and uncleanness laws, the, the beauty of the things in God's temple. The, when, when, when Bezalel made the table and the tabernacle and all that, things were very beautiful, things were very clean. And that should give you an idea of how we should treat our body, if our body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. So when you come to church and you come and you listen to preaching in church, the first thing you want to do is you want to be ready in body and in spirit. So what are some practical things? Well, one thing is you want to get enough rest. You know, some people, like, they're already planning on going out till 1 or 2 a.m. the night before. Are you going to be ready to hear when you come to church on Sunday morning? You know, so that's just one practical thing you can do. Like, so, you, so as Christians, if we're committed to coming to church on Sunday morning, we want, our, we want our hearts ready, we want our bodies ready to receive the preaching you know, how are you living throughout the week in terms of just physically? You know, you're getting enough rest. Are you resting enough on Saturday night so that you can rise up early on Sunday morning and come and be ready to hear? So, <coughs> some things to think about, you know, because if you're struggling to get on time for church, you know, one thing is, you know, waking up earlier, having things ready the night before. You know, rather than you know, getting up in the morning and then having to get everything ready, you know, a good habit you can get yourself into is start getting things ready the night before. It's like some things Elizabeth and I do. It's like, you know, we always have the diaper bag ready. You know what I mean? So when you come home, you get, we, you know, this is, and this is just a, obviously an example that's applicable to us with, with young children. But just think about how apply that principle in your own life. It's like, you know, when, when you get home, you know, you don't like just leave the diaper bag until Sunday morning and now you have to like get the diaper bag ready. It's like you get home, you get the diaper bag, so the diaper bag's always ready to go. So then when you wake up Sunday morning, you know, it's a lot quicker to just get out of the house. 
You know, I, I think we get out of the house pretty quick for a family of six children. And some people, they struggle to get out of the house really quickly when they have one child. I'm thinking, like, when I had one child, I was like, easy. You know, just dress them and just take them out of the house, you know, and have everything ready. But it, it requires being ready and having a mindset of, like, you know, being ready, you know, just physically having things ready. And then you can be to church on time. And, and you know, one thing I always learned, like, even in the corporate world, was, you know, if you're on time, you're late. So some people think, you know, you get to church at 10 o'clock, I'm on time. But, you know, when you're on time, you're late. So you always have to come a little bit early, right? So you come a little bit early so you can have time to say hello to everyone, you know, make yourself a tea or coffee, have a biscuit, you know, get ready to sit down so that when 10 o'clock comes, you're ready to participate in church. You're ready to hear, you know, rather than rushing in or like, you know, you know, like when you come to church late, you're already a little bit frazzled. You know, you're less ready to hear. When you come early and you're a bit more prepared, that will help you to receive the message better, receive what God has for you. And then you're making sure you're taking part in the whole service. What does that mean? Like, so it, it, I, I truly believe that if you come, you know, you're, you're, you know, you get to say hello to people, you're encouraged by, you know, hey, good, it's good to see you again. You sit down, you're ready, your heart is ready. You sing the songs. When you sing the songs, you're thinking about what the Word is saying. You're praising the Lord in your heart. You're thanking God for the things you're singing about. And you read the Scriptures. And you're not just, you know, looking at your phone and looking around and thinking about other things. You're actually reading the Scripture and thinking about, oh, I wonder what is going to be taught today. And maybe something else will be revealed to you that's not in the sermon because you're paying attention to the Bible reading. And then the preaching happens. It's going to be different, isn't it? You're going to be ready to hear, right? And then maybe, maybe you'll receive something that God has for you this morning. Why? Because you prepared yourself physically, right? So that's the physical presentation. You know, and then it, on, on, on par with that as well, so just your body sleeping well and coming early, but being present as well. Being present, what, is, what, is, what do I mean? Everyone's got things going on in their life. You know, you think you've got things going on in your life. Everyone's got things going on in their life, right? Things that they've got, they got to organize, and work they've got to do, and stuff, oh, you know, stuff at the work that you got on your mind. You know, but when you come to church, one way you can be ready is you think, you know what? I'm going to put those things aside and make sure I focus on the Lord Jesus Christ today. You know, you, you leave work just for a couple of, you know, it's like for a couple of hours. You, know, you leave work, you leave your troubles, you leave and you go, you know, I'm here at church now, and this is a time where my heart is focusing on the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, and that can help you to be present too. Matthew 6, therefore take no thought, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things to the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. This is a verse I wanted to point out in this passage here. Take therefore no thought for the morrow. For the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. I probably missed the last bit there. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. That was the part I actually wanted to show. I must have not copied that last slide. So what is verse 34 saying? Verse 34 saying is there's enough evil things, I guess things to think about today and to be worried about tomorrow. And my point here is, you know, when you come to church, you know, try and be present. Try and think about the now even though you may have a lot of pressures in your life. You know, when you come to church, try and focus on the Lord Jesus Christ and think about what God may have to reveal to you this morning. So that's my second point within this, sub, this main point, be ready in body and in spirits. We talked about being ready just physically, right? The way you take care of your body and the way you live physically will impact you know, how ready you are to receive what God has for you on Sunday mornings. But you want to be ready spiritually as well. You know, do you ever ask God to, to reveal things to you that, you know, sometimes you learn things just from the scriptures that we go to, but that I don't preach about. You know, that's happened to me many times in sermons where, you know, the preaching may be on one topic and then they, you know, talk about 
verses, they go to verses. I mean, I've read those verses before, but for some reason, sometimes in church, something gets revealed to me from the scriptures. I have a thought from God's word that I didn't have previously. And that's what I mean by, you know, being ready to hear on Sunday morning, because maybe you may not have got that in your own personal Bible reading, but you weren't ready to hear what God had for you this morning. And it may not always be what the preacher has prepared for you. It may be something that God wants you to see. But were you ready to hear it? Were you ready spiritually? Philippians 3.15, Let us therefore, as many as be perfect, be thus minded. And if anything ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. So, you know, I'm, I'm not of the persuasion of the Pentecostals where, you know, Pentecostals believe, you know, God's just revealing things left, right, things that aren't in the Bible. That's not what I'm talking about. You know, when you talk to Pentecostals, you, you, they, they believe these sorts of things. They believe that God just is always telling them things. God told me this, or God told me that you were going to do this. And, like, God, they're just always getting these revelations. And oh, this sermon is not about Pentecostalism. But my point here is, when I talk about God revealing things to you, it's that sometimes you see things in the Bible, you get thoughts from God's Word that you don't otherwise see. And, you know, it's like you could be reading the Bible and know that scripture, but then there's something in there that you didn't see before. That's what I believe, you know, how that works. That God reveals things to you and it's like, wow, I, didn't, I never saw that before. Or I never saw that in God's Word before. Ephesians 1. Look at what Paul, we, we talked about this when we preached on Ephesians 1. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. So how I'm applying it to this morning is when you're ready spiritually. You know, do you desire for God to teach you things on Sunday morning? You know, do you come with that sort of heart? You know, it's, it's, it's a shame if Christians just come to church treating it like, like a spiritual checklist. Yeah, I did that. I went to church. You know, church is so much more than that. Church, you know, don't turn your Christianity into just like these religious rituals. You know, like, oh yeah, I did the church thing. Yeah, I did the Bible reading thing. You know, and as much as I, you know, don't like you know, sometimes this modern Christianity where it's all just about feelings and everything like that. There's, a, there's an element of truth to the fact that, you know, it's not just a religion, you know, it's a, it's a relationship. And, and what they mean by that is, what I, what I believe sometimes they mean by that is, you know, you're not just going through the motions of just these religious acts, like this mindless, vain religious acts. There, there is a God that you actually worship, that is a real God that wants, wants to know you that you should want to know, and that's what it's about. That's why when you come to church and you sing the songs, it's not just about, oh, that's just something we do at church. The question is, is in your heart, are you actually praising the Lord Jesus in your heart? Do you see what I mean? And you want to get to that level where you actually are considering these things when you do things. And it's the same with preaching. You know, it's not just about, oh, you have to sit through preaching because that's what Christians do. They just have to sit through like an hour of preaching every Sunday morning and then I feel spiritual. The question is, you know, when you come to church, you know, do you have a mindset of, you know, I wonder what God has to reveal to me this morning. What is God going to teach me this morning? You know, not necessarily just what Victor's going to teach me, you know, because God may reveal something to you that I may not intend. You know, and that's one of the beautiful things about learning in church and learning from preaching is sometimes the preacher has one thing that they want to teach you Right? But then God has something else that he wants to teach you, and you get that. But are you ready to receive it? So, being ready spiritually also refers to, you know, how you live. You know, how you live will impact the words effect, the word of God's effect on your life. You know, if you can think you can just live a godless life throughout the week, I don't care about the things of God at all. Just like live worldly throughout the week. But then you come to church and, and you think that that's not going to impact, you know, what God can reveal to you. You're kidding yourself. You know, like, so the, the, the way, how spiritual you are throughout the week is going to change, you know, what you receive in preaching 
as well. So, you know, don't miss out on those things. You know, think about how you live throughout the week. And if you live more in the spirit than in the flesh, then when the spirit has things to reveal to you, then you'll be more ready to hear. Look at the parable of the sower. Now, the parable of the sower generally is about salvation, but think about it in this application, right? What your heart is like and then what impact it has. Now, the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. Those by the wayside are they that hear, then cometh the devil and taketh away the word out of their hearts, lest they should believe and be saved. So obviously, if you're not even saved, you know, you're not going to receive much at all, right? <coughs> so that's one scenario. And this is where when Jesus talks about, you know, whatever you have, you'll receive, and what you don't have, you'll, you'll lose, is because if you don't even have salvation, then you'll lose everything, your, your soul as well. But what we're talking about here is you think about these other scenarios, right? They on the rock are they which, when they hear, receive the word with joy, and these have no root, which for a while believe, and in time of temptation fall away. Now, we always think of that as like, tenta like temptation from the world, like trials from the world. But I also think as well, you know, when, when people are more spiritual, they receive Bible preaching better, right? They're less offended. You know what I mean? Sometimes even Christians, they come to church, you know, sometimes people are always really offended at the preaching. You know, they're offended at what's said. Oh, is he talking about me? How can, he, how can you say things like that? See, a spiritual person won't think about that, right? They're not thinking about, are they offended? They're thinking about, okay, what can I learn from this sermon? What can God teach me here? So likewise here, your spiritual maturity and your spiritual deepness will change like how you receive the word and how, you know, how offended you can be. You know, maybe you'll hear something and rather than being mature about it and considering what's being taught and thinking about it, some people just get offended and they quit that church just because of something that was preached, Right? Verse 14, and that which fell among thorns are they which when they heard go forth and are choked with cares and riches and pleasures of this life and bring no fruit to perfection. So it's oftentimes we talk about this verse, about having all these vain things in our life and the riches and pleasures of this world, the cares of this life, and it's going to impact as well how you receive God's word too. Like I talked about, being present. If you have all these you know, all these worries in life and all these cares and all these things and all that, and your heart is not on the things of God, your heart is on the things of the world. You know, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. So you see how your spiritual level will impact how you hear God's word as well, preaching as well. But that on the good ground are they which is an honest and good heart, having heard the word, keep it and bring forth fruit with patience. No man, when he had lighted a candle, covereth it with a vessel, putteth it under a bed, but setteth it on a candlestick, and they which enter in may see the light. But nothing is secret that shall not be made manifest, neither anything hid that shall not be known and come abroad. Take heed, therefore, look, how ye hear. So even Jesus here, this parable is mainly talking about salvation, but we're sort of extending this principle just into how you receive Bible preaching. But he's saying here, take heed, therefore, how ye hear, right? So this parable is about how people hear the word of God, and that's what I'm talking to you about today. For whosoever hath to him shall be given, and whosoever hath not from him shall be taken, even that which he seemeth to have. So the primary application in this parable is salvation, right? Because if you don't even receive what you have, like you put the, you know, like the talents with the usury in the bank, right? And he's going to lose everything, right? And you lose your soul as well. But I still, I believe as well, this principle applies with God's word. You know, what you do with God's word. You receive God's word, you do more with it, then you will retain more. But you don't do what you've, what you've learned from God's word. You start to lose it as well. Okay, so you want to be ready to hear both in body and in spirit. Number two, when you listen to Bible preaching, is you want to be ready to search. Be ready to search. You know, if you know what verse I'm going to, we'll get there soon. But before we get to Acts, I want to show you the Thessalonians, right? The Thessalonians and what Paul had to say about the Thessalonians. In 1 Thessalonians 1, 6, he says here, And ye became followers of us and of the Lord. Look, and having received the word, 
in much affliction with joy of the Holy Ghost, so that you were in samples to all that believe in Macedonia and Achaia. For from you sounded out the word of the Lord, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but also in every place your faith to God were to spread abroad, so that we need not to speak anything. So look at the Thessalonians. You know, like Paul had some, some things to say about them. Look at how they received the word. They received, they did, they, they learned, they happily received it in, in trials, tribute, and then they did what they learned. 1 Thessalonians 2, verse 13. For this cause also, thank we God without ceasing, because when you received the word of God, which you heard of us, you received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that belief. Now, Paul can obviously say that. I mean, you know, I wouldn't like preachers using this verse to say, hey, you should just receive my preaching like the word of God, because what they were preaching was the word of God, right? They were actually revealing like a lot of the New Testament to these people um, as they were preaching. But you can see there that they received the word of God. That's what he had to say about the Thessalonians. Now look at what he has to say about the Bereans in Acts 17. You know, and the brethren immediately sent away Paul and Silas by night unto Berea, who coming thither went into the synagogue of the Jews. So this is now they're in Berea. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica. So we saw what Paul had to say about the Thessalonians and now see what Luke is writing about the Bereans. These were more noble, more noble than those in Thessalonica in that they received the word with all readiness of mind. So that's one thing they did. Well, they received the word like the Thessalonians, but, and searched the scriptures daily, whether those things were so. They searched the scriptures daily, whether those things were so. So when you hear the word of God, another thing you want to consider is you want to make sure that what you hear about the word of God is actually true, right? You want that mindset that, hey, yes, I receive what I'm being taught, but I also, in the back of my mind, think, you know, is this line up with what I know about the Scriptures? You see, search the Scriptures daily, whether those things are so. Because there is false doctrine out there. <coughs> there is a lot of false doctrine out there. And you know what's going to protect you from being carried away with false doctrine? Is that you know God's Word. You know the Scriptures. 1 John 2.26, look at what John here writes. These things have I written unto you concerning them that seduce you. But the anointing which ye have received of him abideth in you. And ye need not that any man teach you, but as the same anointing teacheth you of all things and is truth and is no lie, even as it hath taught you, ye shall abide in him. So we know the Holy Spirit abides in us. This is what this is talking about, that anointing. Right? The, the anointing of oil symbolized the Spirit, you know, coming upon people, being anointed by the Holy Spirit. So he's saying we have the Holy Spirit abiding in us. We have God's Word, so that we read God's Word. We can, we can learn the things God has for us. And this is something that you should internalize, that you need not that any man teach you, which means that you know, anything I've learned, you can learn too from God's Word. Right? So you don't need somebody to reveal things to you from the Word of God, when you have the Word of God and you have the Holy Spirit living inside of you. That's why. Don't think that you are like unqualified. You know, if people say, well, I'm unqualified to read the Bible. Like uh, some people have like this sort of, you know, Catholic mentality still, that the Bible is like a book that it's like not for them. It's not for the common man. They're not qualified to understand the Bible. You know, and then, you know, in other uh, religions like Islam, where you know you have to you know understand the language to know the real Bible. No, we have the Bible. You know the Bible is in English. We have the King James Bible. We have the Holy Spirit. You can read the Bible. You can learn the things of the Bible. You need not that any man teach you. It's something important to know, so that when you read the Bible, you can you can do what the Bereans did, right? So it's not just the Bereans. Like you can be a Berean. You can be more noble than those in Thessalonica. You receive the word with all readiness of mind and search the scriptures daily whether those things be so. Right? So you don't get spoiled. Colossians 2, hey, beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. See, so you don't want to be carried away with false doctrine and the way you do that is you're ready to search. Okay? Now, 
just, 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 just uh, think about what this verse actually means, right? We think spoil as in things go off. And we say, and you probably you've read this verse before, and you probably think, beware lest any man spoil you, kind of like, you know, ruin your faith, point you in the wrong direction, that sort of thing. And it's talking about those sort of things. But remember what spoil is. Spoil is like the spoils of war. You know, so like, like in Proverbs 31, when it says, the heart of a husband does safely trust in him. Uh, trust, um, the heart of a husband does safely trust in her. So that he shall have no need of spoil. It's not saying that he doesn't need to be ruined. It's because he, he doesn't need like these windfall gains, like these, these you know, windfall gains because his, he can trust his wife with his finances. So when you think about spoil, what is he saying? It's like beware that people come and talk to you about philosophy and vain to see the tradition of men to take your money away. Which is basically, when you think about the, the, the modern preachers these days, when they say, you know, put your hand on the screen, send $100,000, God's going to bless you with a million dollars. You can imagine this sort of thing, right? Where people are being spoiled through false doctrine and false teaching after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. Okay? So, a couple of just practical things on this point. So, I always tell new believers, you know, you need to beware of listening to too many sermons only at the beginning of your Christian life. So what happens when people get saved? What do they do? They start looking at sermons, start learning sermons, like, and, they'll, and they'll binge sermons, right? They just listen to lots of this preacher, that preacher, this preacher. And look, it's great that people want to learn, but it needs to be balanced, you know? You need, you need to have less sermons, more scripture. Why? Because you need to search the scriptures daily, whether those things are so. So you need to make sure, yes, it's great to listen to a lot of preaching, but you need to make sure it's balanced with a lot of Bible study so that when you listen to the sermons, you don't get carried away with things that you may not even know, right? And then, see, you can, sometimes you, you can realize, like you don't realize whether you're following God and man, and sometimes you don't realize who is following God versus following man until that man starts going off a cliff. And then all the people that you, you thought, you know, because you thought that person was preaching Bible, right, and, and everything was good and these people were sound and they were like the Bereans, you know, receiving the word with all ready to mind, searching the scriptures daily, whether those things are so. And then this, this man that they're listening to starts just, just like going off a cliff and all the people you thought were like Bereans just like follow them off the cliff, you know. And, you think, and then you start thinking, are they, are they actually following God? Or are they following a man? You know, I always say, you know, you need to make sure you know what you believe. If anything you believe, you say, well, that's because that's what this person teaches. Or I heard this here. You've got to ask yourself the question, you know, is, are you following God or are you following man? So you say, like, Victor, don't, don't you believe what you're preaching is correct? Of course I believe what I'm preaching is correct. So I don't, I don't tell you this because I don't believe what I'm preaching is correct. I don't want you in the habit of just believing everything you hear that's preached, right? So I want you to apply the same standards to me because I want you to have a good habit that when you listen to Bible preaching, that you always think to yourself, is this what the Word of God teaches? Is this what I know the Word of God to say? Right? And, 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 and compare it to the Scriptures. All right? So you want to be ready in body and in spirit. You want to be ready to search when you hear preaching. Number three is you want to be ready to apply. Ready to apply things to yourself first. Matthew 7, verse 3. And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but considerest not the beam that is in thine own eye? This is, this is the verse that I think of when I think about people listening to preaching and not applying it to themselves first. You know, not having, your, not having yourself primarily in your sights when you receive Bible preaching. Because some people, when they listen to Bible preaching on certain topics, the first thing on their mind is somebody else, right? What well, somebody else is not doing, right? Somebody else needed that sermon. Somebody else needed to hear that. Rather than, what do you need to hear? How can you apply the lessons that you're learning? How can you apply the scripture that we're going to this morning? And why beholdest thou the moat that is in thy brother's eye? That's like a small speck, right? But considerest not the beam 
that is in thine own eye. Because if you think about like wood, you know, wood beams, he's saying like you've got like a splinter you're looking at in somebody's eye. And oh, you've got like a huge plank of wood in your own eye. How would thou say to thy brother, let me pull out the moat out of thine eye, but what a beam is in thine own eye. Thou hypocrite, first cast out the beam out of thine own eye, and then shalt thou see clearly to cast out the moat out of thy brother's eye. Give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast ye your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet and turn again and rend you. So that last verse, I believe, is talking about how people give advice, right? Like, see, if you give advice and you're going to try and take the moat out of your brother's eye, verse 6 is saying these are some things to consider about whether or not you should give that advice. You know, are you casting pearls before swine? And (coughs) will they take it the right way? Will they turn again and rend you? So one thing you want to think about, because what are we talking about this morning? What are some things you should consider when you listen to Bible preaching? Are you ready, be ready to apply it to yourself first and foremost, right? So think about like preaching on good works, right? Consider what you aren't doing before you think about what what others aren't, you know, like, uh, and that can happen in anything, you know, whether it's happening with Bible reading or prayer or soul winning, you know, I'm all for soul winning. But I don't want people that are doing some of the fundamentals in Christianity feeling high and mighty, you know, above everyone else. You know, when you hear a sermon, you know, um, and this would happen in some of the churches that I used to go to, where, you know, you hear a sermon on preaching and people's thoughts are, the first thing is like, yeah, you know, that person needs to hear it. You know, that's a, to me, that's a very, like, fleshly thing, right? Like, when, when, you, when, when you treat preaching like, things that you want to say to people that you wouldn't say yourself, you know, and that's why some people like, like, your sort of, like, obnoxious preaching, because they think, oh, you know, that, yeah, give it to them, yeah, give it to them, like, something that I would want to say to them, but I can't say to them, but I want the sermon to say it to them, and I'm saying that sort of mindset is the wrong sort of, first of all, it's the wrong sort of attitude, I'm not saying that it's wrong to desire things to be preached, because you want it to impact other people's lives, but what I'm saying here to you today it's first and foremost, when you listen to a sermon, it shouldn't be how does it apply to somebody else, right? The sermon should be how does it apply to you? And how can you apply what you're learning to your life first and foremost? You remove the beam out of your own eye before you try and remove the speck from somebody else's eye, from the, the moat from somebody else's eye. So your thought should be, you know, hey, what, are you, what can you do better before what others are? What are you not doing before what others aren't doing? What can you do better before you think about what somebody else needed to hear, right? And it doesn't mean you can never look outward, like I said. It doesn't mean you never, you never judge, you never not remove the moat from your brother's eye. But what is your primary focus? The beam that is your own eye. That's what you do first. And that's the sort of attitude you should have towards these things, right? Let's look at... Uh, um, yeah, one, one last example is, uh, you know, when it comes to applying things to yourself and applying things to others, because a big, a big application is always when it comes to any sort of conflict resolution or roles in a marriage. Yeah, that's always the one, you know, like, you know, preacher gets up, talks about, you know, women, submit to your husbands, obey your husbands. You know, and all, the, all the men in the audience would be like, yeah, my wife needs to hear that one. Are you listening to this one? And I, right? And it's the other way around. You know, it's like husbands, you know, you, know, you need to give your life for your, for your wife and you need to be, you know, a lover and, you know, things like that. And it's the other way around. So that, that's a, just the perfect example. And that, that's always the example I think of about like applying it to yourself. You know, like when you hear that sermon, you know, do you apply things to yourself first and think about, you know, what can you do better rather than what the other person can do better? Second Timothy 3, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. So not only is it about when it's practical sermons that you think about applying it to yourself first, you know, rather than firstly applying it to others. You need to understand that all scripture 
is profitable to you. Right? All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine. You know, you didn't say some scripture is given by inspiration of God. Some scripture is profitable. It's all scripture is profitable. But some people have a mindset, some Christians have a mindset that there are some parts of the Bible or some topics in Christianity that they don't really need to pay attention to. Right? And it may not be like practical things. So on the practical side of it, you know, let's say we're let's say preaching is about being a leader at church and you're a woman. And you're saying, like, well, I don't need to know this stuff. That's the wrong attitude. You know, even when it comes to marriage, you know, maybe you're, you know, not married, or, you know, maybe it's talking about parenting, and you're not a parent, or it's a sermon on dating, and you're like well past dating years, you know, roles in marriage, you know, just these sorts of practical things. So there's that aspect where people think, well, that doesn't apply to me directly. Do I need to know these things? Well, that's not the right frame of mind. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. You should know these things. Why? Because it's not only about whether it applies to you directly, right? It's about whether or not you can understand these things and what's the right Christian approach to these things so that you can talk about it with other people. You can give advice. Right? That's why it's important. And not only is it on these practical things, but it's also on doctrinal things too. Sometimes Christians go, ah, oh, you know what, I just like know the basics, but uh, you know, I don't need to trouble myself with stuff about the Trinity or, oh, it's seven on end times, I'll just tune out, I don't need to know this stuff, it's too complex for me. You know, it's, I'll leave that for the, for the scholarly types, the scholarly Christians, you know. What other ones? End times. Old Testament laws. You know, you say, Old Testament laws, do I need to all know this stuff? Stuff's too complex. You shouldn't have that mindset. All scripture is given by inspiration of God, and it's profitable for doctrine. Right? You should know these things. And a lot of the things I talk about, see, a lot of the things that I talk about and I preach about come about because of conversations I've had with people. Like, you know, conversations I have with people, objections from believers and unbelievers. So you think about these things. So you think, Victor may be just going in deep on these things, but if you understand why, why I'm talking about these things, it's to give you a solid foundation so that when you talk about God's word, you can apply these things and, and make sense of God's word so you don't have internal contradictions in, in your positions. Okay? So, be ready to apply. And I apply it to you first, not just the practical things, but also, you know, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. There's always something for you to learn and it's always profitable to you. It's coming from God's word. And the last one, just quickly, is, you know, we're ready, body and spirit, ready to search the scriptures, you know, ready to apply it to our first, ourselves first. And the last one is be ready to do. Be ready to do. You know, when you come to church, do you have an attitude of, you know, I'm going to see what I can learn today. Not just so it's like, oh, that's an interesting thing. That's interesting. Victor's sermons are interesting. You know, I'm learning a lot. But I don't want to do them. You know, I, don't, I don't want to apply any of these things. You know? But do you have an attitude, like when you come to church, you hear the sermon, it's like, hey, what is something I can change in my life that will make me a better Christian? You know, what's something I can do? Are you ready to receive that and to do it. You know, you don't want to just hear the title of the sermon and then just be like, ah, oh, already, ah, oh, yeah, I'm not going to do that. I already, I already know what Victor thinks about that. I'll do that. Hey, it doesn't have to be just necessarily my opinions on things. Hey, maybe, like I said in the sermon this morning, uh, in the intro, you know, maybe God has something that he'll reveal to you. You know, give you a conviction about things from God's word. Will you do that, at least? Do what God has put on your heart to do. James 1.22 But be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. You see, listening to preaching is not enough. You know, listening to preaching is not enough. You know, if, if, if hearing Bible and hearing about the Bible is the extent of your spiritual life, that's not enough. You know, you can't just hear, you've got to do. Don't deceive yourself into thinking you're more spiritual than you are just because you listen to a lot of preaching. That doesn't make you spiritual, right? You're just this. You're doer, you're not, you're, you want to be doer of the word and not a hearer only. 
Don't want to be deceived into thinking that you're more than you are. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in the glass. For he beholdeth himself and goeth this way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. I mean, just think about how much, how many sermons you've listened to in your life. I mean, if you've been coming to this church for seven years, you know, listening to a sermon every week. What's that? Seven, that's 350 sermons. How much do you remember? Yeah. You know, like, not even I remember all my, my sermons. You know, sometimes I go back and listen to my sermons, and I'm like, man, I can't... Sometimes like, I, I listen to my old sermons, and I'm like, oh, I can't believe I preached that. Like, that's, that was actually pretty, pretty good. You know, at the time, I, I didn't feel that way about it. And I listened back to it, and I'm like, oh, because, you know, it, it's interesting when I listen back to my old sermons. And there's things, that, topics I talk about, and it, and it must have been things that were on my heart at that time and that I've, you know, not thought about since then. And it's like, I don't even remember it being in that sermon. Um, so, yeah, sometimes it's interesting when I listen back to my old sermons and think about some of the things I, I talked about and I, I've forgotten a lot. And I'm the one teaching it. So, imagine how much you guys are forgetting. You know, if you don't purpose in your heart to go, you know what, I'm going to do it. And those are the sermons you're going to remember. The sermons you remember are the ones where you go, you know what, I'm going to try them. I'm going to do that. And why, why did it stick with you? Because you weren't a hero of the word only, you were a doer. You know, and those are the sermons that will stick with you. And going back to my very first point, right, you've got to be ready in spirit. Because if you're not ready to hear when you come to the house of God, that thing that might have changed the course of your life, you know, because you implemented it, you didn't receive. And, and I see that in Christians' life. Like, you know, sometimes I preach the same things. And, you know, people, even just through different stages of life, they are ready to hear different things. You know, but do you have to be at, at that point in your life, you know, when things happen? to try and figure out now what the right thing to do is. Or when things go wrong, now you're seeking answers from God and seeking, hey, what's the right thing to do? Wouldn't it, wouldn't an, like a, what is it, an ounce of prevention is better than a pound of cure? And it's like that with God's word. Okay, so some things to consider. Be ready to hear. Be ready in body and in spirit. Be ready to search the scriptures. You know, don't just receive things blindly from anyone. Know the scriptures. Be ready to apply, <coughs> apply what you learn. Apply it to yourself first, first and foremost, not to others. And when you hear preaching, you have a heart ready to do. Don't just be a hearer of the word. All right, let's pray. Lord, thank you for your word this morning. Lord, help us to apply what we learned this morning. Help us to be ready to hear. And when we come to the house of God, help us have our hearts right with you. Help us to live a life that will not hinder. You don't have too many thorns in our life. We'll be on stony ground. And uh, Lord, I pray that you know, as we come to church, we'd be able to be present. We'd be able to put away all the, the cares in our life and, and really have our spirit open to hear what the Spirit saith to the churches. So Lord, we are uh, and I pray that you use this sermon and uh, speak to the hearts of the people here. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.